Hello, combat sports fans. Welcome to FN's presentation of Tank Race Classics. You are tuning in to Japanese Pioneers. And right now we have a battle between Hagar Chin entering the Pancrase ring first. Says he collide with former King of Pancrase, Kuma Kunioku, Akakuma John Ram Dean, and Robin Black, calling all the action. And what's interesting about uh, Kunioku Robin is that I think his proper weight clash should be 145 pounds, but he has fought the likes of Mark Bart, Taiyu Kondo, guys that have fought in the 185, 205 pound division. Uh, so it just tells you the type of fighter that we're dealing with in Kunioka. A guy that simply just does not give a damn. Mm. He will fight anybody. Yeah, and hey, man, if MMA is your thing, if martial arts, if combat sports is your thing, this is a really, really fun show because we get to look back in time. And among all the things that you learn that give you a new context of how to watch your sport, one of them is the fact that hey guys, they were making it up as they went along. There was barely any weight classes. It was like, ah, you look about the size of this guy, go fight him. This event took place at Pancreas Alive Kunio Kun Green Kun March 22nd, 1997. Hey, Hank, can we call him Sammy? Hagar Chin. I think we can. His nickname, Sammy. Now, it's a good nickname. In tribute to one of the greats. Some people would disagree with you. I'm not one of those people. Listen, man. DLR deserves all the credit in the world, but uh, we got to go here with Hagar Chin, our man Sammy. Kunioka has been in there with some serious heavy hitters in the past. Has Victories over the likes of Guy Metzger, Frank Shamrock, fought to a draw against Yuki Kondo, victory over Nate Marquardt, Yankee Sudo, fought to a draw against Sean Shirk. I like the way Kunioka stabbed out with the right uh, push kick and then used the left hook, you know, obviously with an open hand, but a lot of the techniques are the same whether you close the fist or open the hand. Beautiful double leg takedown, modern style wrestling approach. And this is probably one of the reasons why Kunioka is so good is that, you know, even though he might be smaller, clearly he does not neglect technique. No, beautiful. They penetrated deep on that double leg and looked, you had his head up nice and high as he turned the corner. Nice mount here. You see how easily guys uh, achieve uh, position in... Uh, these earlier fights. You also see them change position a lot. You got this great mount and he changed to side and that opened up the back. You know, we've had a lot of fun calling these already and, and uh, these Pancrase Classics are going to be a, a fun staple here on Fight Network. But man, we, it, it's been a real learning curve for us. One, we're looking back in time so you get context by looking at the, the formative years but one of the things that we've picked up is that there was a weird blending of reality and entertainment at certain times during the evolution of Pancrase, and sometimes it's hard to know what you're seeing. And we also learned that you're not the only guy that can rock pink inside the cage. <laughs> yeah, Kunioka looking good. Cage or ring? Oh, yeah. this idiot yeah. needs a ring. I see three, uh, three strings there. Uh, going into this fight, Hagar Chin. On a three-fight losing skid. Hoping to change that tonight as he is on top. But Kunioka seems to be in control despite the fact that his back is against the mat. Yeah. Trying to climb up that left arm in between. There. As you pass, Kunioka uh, attacked Chin's uh, left arm with a Kimura. But uh, Chin is passed here. Kunioka trying to spin around for an arm bar. In our show today, some of the greatest Japanese fighters to ever compete in the Pancrase organization, including the founders, Mazakatsu Funaki and Minoru Suzuki, as well as former King of Pancrase, Yuki Kondo, a man that battled for the UFC light heavyweight title. For people that study jiu-jitsu, you know, even as recently as six and seven years ago, 
when guys took off the gi, it really opened the game up. Now, the modern no gi is a lot more of a crushing style, a lot closer in position. But this sort of, you know, guys training the gi, then remove it, it really opened up this sliding, slicing, you know, uh, uh, scrambly style. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. You wouldn't see a lot of this as much anymore. Guys would really settle in, into a position. It would be too risky to be up this high all the time. But their willingness to travel to and, and into and out of different positions. There's an armbar attempt here. But see, he's willing to, to attack that armbar with a no risk, no reward style of thinking. And he ended up on the bottom. But in a game where there's no closed fist to the face, the bottom is a pretty good place to attack with submissions. Kunioka would go on to have more than a dozen submission victories throughout his career. Looking for the Kimura chin, looking to gain the mount. It's so fun to, to watch these. There's still attacks that guys were using, and maybe they rarely, if ever, worked, but they got in the habit of using them. Attacking, oh, there's an armbar attempt here. Climbing up nicely for this. Chin grabs the ropes. Escape. The wherewithal to do that. No. You're trying to figure out where, you know, in certain sports, in certain interpretations of combat sports, they're trying to simulate the reality of combat. Um, I don't know where in real combat you can grab a rope and get out. <laughs> but again, we have to remember, Pancrase came from professional wrestling. We are hybrid wrestlers. Mm -hmm. We cannot forget or neglect our past. Uh, pro wrestling was just a part of the building blocks of what we have now as a no-holds-barred or mixed martial arts. Beautiful. Kuniyoka shoots a triangle. Trying to secure it. He's in there deep. That, oh, no. Oh. Grabs the ropes yeah, once again. <laughs> if, uh, if you're Kuniyoka, it's like, I got this guy. He's triangled up. But yeah, you're right. You know, it's basically... It took, wrestling was something that was originally real. What we called professional wrestling was real. Guys would travel around, they'd be the best champion, and people would challenge them, and they'd beat everybody. And it became boring and hard to make money when somebody just went to town, held a guy down for 10 or 15 minutes, and beat him and took everyone's money. So they started... Hookers. Yeah. yeah. They started, they started faking some fights, giving them up to people. And that took years until people really understood that what became pro wrestling was a performance. Oh, beautiful oh, knee. Yes, I couldn't tell if that stunned Hagar Chin or if he just felt that, you know what, now is a good time to look for a takedown. But we have one of my favorite positions uh -huh. here, enjoyed by Kunioka as he looks for the arm lock. Neon belly to an arm bar, but uh, he uses it to pass. But uh, yeah, so you had this history of pro wrestling becoming, re that was real, became fake. And then uh, over in Japan, we saw Pancrase take shape. And Pancrase was trying to take what people enjoyed as wrestling, which was fake, and make it real. And uh, Pre Predetermined. I predetermined, think. yes. I mean, fake is so insulting because these are incredible athletes who go flying off of things and land flush with their back on the mat. There's nothing fake about being thrown on the ground. But uh, it was predetermined, and, and uh, it was part of a performance. Pancrase attempted to make that... To real bridge, combat. Bridge the gap. Yeah. And in the passing of this, and this is something you'll see and as we watch back in these Pancrase classics, sometimes there's still performance yes, in it. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. And I think you're referring to Ken Shamrock, Matt Hume. Yeah, that one was crazy. Speaking of Matt Hume, he will be in our co featured bout of the evening, taking on menacing Minoru Suzuki. And you know, it's. Uh, we're, we're learning so much about the Japanese influence in, in mixed martial arts and martial arts today by looking back at this. But we still don't have the whole story. We can learn what we can learn from what we know about the stats and the figures and the history and these, and these matches themselves. But we don't know the motivation behind it. We don't know what promoters said to people. We don't know yep. what fighters did when they got on a plane and headed over there. We know that Boss Rutten went over to smash everybody's face in. But we don't know if the guys he was facing thought that it was a different style of fight. Oh. I mean, it's, yeah, that arm is getting this. straightened. This looks like it could be over. Oh, now he's got it. Trying to yeah. secure, and there you see the tap out. 
Hagar, Sammy Chin forced to succumb the arm lock. Tomi Kunioka gets it done in impressive fashion. And he does it on the buck, and that's a perfect time to do it. As he bucks, his arm comes up. Now look, some say don't cross your feet, but when you got nice texture on your ankle wraps and your shin pads, what a great way to, to get some grip here. And watch as he extends, and he'll do it again. He needs to bump that hand off there. And now it's a done deal. Hyperextension finishes. Beautiful. Hagar Chin had his moments, but Kunioka was confident from the get-go. He emerges victorious here in our first fight of the night. Don't go anywhere. More action from Pancrase Classics when we return to FX.